Hi everyone, this week's episode of Chops with Hops is going to be a tutorial and gear rundown for musicians who are interested in getting into teaching online music lessons. We're going to talk about the equipment that's absolutely essential to get the job done, gear that's highly recommended to improve your workflow and your student's experience, and a few little extras that are just for fun. If you're a gearhead, you're going to love this episode. Roll the intro. <laughs> Before the coronavirus pandemic, like many freelance musicians, I was making a living full-time between performing, recording, and teaching in-person music lessons. When the world shut down, I had to figure out how to interact with my students online and create a fun, immersive lesson experience for them that offers the same or better value as in-person lessons. As it turned out, uh, using mostly my existing computer and studio equipment and making a few thoughtful upgrades, I was able to deliver a high quality experience for my students, keep them engaged and motivated, expand my student base, and reduce my overhead expenses. Here's how you can do it too. We'll start with the gear that is absolutely essential to get the job done. First, you're gonna need a computer or tablet with a built-in microphone, webcam, and internet connectivity over Wi-Fi or ethernet. Streaming video and audio is actually a pretty demanding job for most machines, so I really recommend using something fairly modern, at least eight gigs of RAM for computers. Having said that, until recently, I was getting the job done really well on a heavily upgraded 2012 MacBook Pro. Second, you'll need to connect your tablet or computer to a fast, reliable network using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Again, streaming video and audio is very demanding, so if you're connected to a slow or unreliable network, that's going to increase the likelihood of having dropouts during lessons. That's not fun. Third, you'll need to have a clean, quiet space free of distractions to teach in. This could be all or part of a room in your house or apartment, or even a studio space that you rent. You'll also want to have a desk or console or music stand on which to rest your computer or tablet. Fourth, you'll need to choose a video conferencing platform to use for interacting with your students. Having tried them all, I heartily recommend Zoom because it provides the most flexibility and control in terms of audio settings. And it goes without saying, but of course your student will need to have all of these things as well. Now for the fun part, let's talk about some equipment and ideas that I highly recommend implementing if you want to immediately improve the online lesson experience for your students and for yourself as well. Number one, isolate your audio inputs and outputs by using headphones. If you've ever experienced annoying echo, echo, echo on phone calls, you'll know why this is important. If you're listening to your student through speakers, there's a good chance your microphone could pick up that audio signal and send it back to your student, resulting in an echo. Most platforms use some kind of echo cancellation technology, but that can also add unwanted processing to the sound of your instrument. If you and your student are both using headphones, you'll dramatically decrease the likelihood of running into serious audio quality issues. Over-ear headphones are great, as are earbuds or in-ear monitors if you want something more discreet. Number two, to immediately increase the quality of the audio you're sending to your student, use a USB mic or audio interface. The built-in microphone in your computer or tablet is designed to pick up the sound of your voice speaking at normal volume. Singing or playing an instrument is likely to overload or peak that microphone, resulting in you sending distorted, unpleasant sounding audio to your students. A USB mic is a simple plug and play way to add a more professional sounding audio input to your computer or tablet. The Blue Yeti mic is a great option for teachers, and the Blue Snowball is a really nice affordable option to recommend to your students so you can hear them better too. If you play an instrument that you need to plug in, like electric bass or guitar, or like me, you play a loud instrument and need an additional microphone for your voice, you'll want to get an audio interface instead. Audio interfaces essentially let you plug regular pro audio equipment into your computer. So if you already have a high quality microphone or two lying around, that's the way to go. Here are some audio examples to show you what I mean. Number three, if you invest in headphones, 
and a high quality audio input device, you can take advantage of the music and pro audio settings in Zoom. Number four, if you're using a high quality microphone, protect your investment by using a sturdy mic stand or boom arm. I like to weigh down my studio mic stands using ankle weights purchased from my local hardware store. Number five, audio quality is very important for music lessons, but so is video quality. Most computers and tablets have good, not great webcams built in. 720p resolution is kind of the standard. That's definitely good enough for teaching music lessons. However, I found it can be useful for demonstration purposes to have a camera that can change field of view and zoom in and out. The Logitech Brio webcam does that job well and can also stream and record in high res 1080p or 4K. Number six, a wired and not wireless ethernet connection is recommended if you're streaming high quality audio and video to your students. A wired connection will generally be faster and more reliable than Wi-Fi. I actually ran a 75 foot ethernet cable from my office to my basement studio to get this done. And it's been a game changer. Number seven, if you're spending hours each day teaching online music lessons, make sure you invest in a comfortable chair. My cat Sarah approves of this one and she's really picky. This is the adjustable musician's chair made by QuickLock. Finally, let's talk about the extras. Equipment, software, and techniques that will improve the music lesson experience in small but noticeable ways. Plus, it's fun to play with. Number one, spend some time dialing in the lighting in your studio. Even the best webcam can't completely compensate for inadequate lighting. My personal solution has been to position an 18 inch ring light in the front left corner of my studio, angled slightly upward to reflect soft light off the ceiling. I also use my overhead ceiling fan light dimmed to about 30% with a white reflective curtain to my right acting as a fill light. I'm still tweaking this setup to get it just right and your solution might be completely different depending on how your space is set up. Number two, if you're using a computer with a small screen, you might find that using a large external monitor provides better ergonomics and workflow. With this 27 inch curved monitor, I can read sheet music directly from the screen, eliminating my need for a music stand. And I can also see my students more clearly without hunching over a tiny laptop screen. Number three, using a DAW or digital audio workstation like Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase, or GarageBand can open up some interesting educational possibilities. These programs make it easy to create and share audio tracks or musical examples with your students, especially when sharing your screen in Zoom. You can also use audio routing software like Loopback to feed the audio from your DAW into Zoom, giving you the ability to mix, process, and add effects to the audio you stream to your students. Number four, music notation software like Finale, Sibelius, Dorico, or web-based equivalents like Flat.io are great ways to demonstrate written music theory concepts. Just initiate a screen share in Zoom and away you go. Number five, consider adding a backdrop or green screen to make your studio space look more professional or interesting. A green screen is especially fun now that travel tourism is limited. You can bring the world to your students during their lessons. Number six, if necessary, consider adding some acoustic treatment to your teaching studio. Mine doubles as a recording studio, so my solution was to install a flexible ceiling track all around the room's perimeter. I then hung up thick moving blankets and curtains, which can be moved around strategically to deaden or liven the acoustics of the room. Number seven, consider creating a digital archive of exercises and practice routines that can be shared with your students. I made a Dropbox folder that contains handouts and etudes I've written over the years, which all my students have access to 24-7. That way, they never run out of material to practice, and they never have an excuse not to practice. Of course, your mileage may vary with all of these ideas and solutions. Having the right gear matters, but figuring out how to use it properly is even more important. I'm a low brass player primarily, so of course, if you play or teach different instruments or disciplines, or if you have a bigger or smaller space or budget, your ideal setup might look completely different from mine feel free to comment below to share your own setup and experience. And remember to like and subscribe for more great content.